All right, so we're readying up a 3D printer, migrating a file into it. And it's coming up extremely tiny. So the first thing we'll do is we'll hit place just to get it in the center of our workspace. Place button's up there. And it at least decided that yes, laying it down is the best. Um, because if it tried to print with the base on the bottom, you get all kinds of crazy scaffolding and have to peel it apart. But you guys definitely want that to be a lot bigger. So that's what the scale function up here is for. So you hit scale and it defaults to one because we haven't changed the scale. So let's make it twice as big. Hit scale again. And let's see if we can go one more. Again, scale it by two. Hey, that's starting to look like something. Yep, now it fell through the platform, but you hit place again, and brings it right back to where it needs to be. So the place button will orient whatever is on the screen to the center. Yep, and if you hit it repeatedly, sometimes it turns, but this one, this one, it's happy where it is. Okay. Now, if we, if we wanted to print it standing up, that's what the rotate function is for. So you hit rotate, we're going to flip it 90 degrees in the Y axis, I believe. And so now it's standing up in the platform. All right, so while we're at it, why don't we explain X and Y axis here? So the red line on the virtual build platform is the X axis, the green line is your Y axis, and the line that we can't see, but it is technically yellow in there, is the Z axis. So if I rotate it on the Z axis, it's just gonna sit there and spin around. If I rotate it on the X axis, it's gonna stand it up on a 10. Or lay it back down. Okay, Y axis then. It, it spun around so many times. And obviously it's fallen through the platform again, so we go to place. place. And it'll try and print it like that, but you're gonna get all kinds of scaffolding down here. That could be a good time. <laughs> and these probably won't be straight. So we're gonna rotate that again in... So, take these darn things to get in the viewport to show the way you want it to is always fun. So that should be what we get. So you can compare that to the size of our build platform over here. So that should be about three inches wide and maybe two and a half tall. Now to actually print it, what we need to do is we need to start, because we're using ABS filament right now, so we need to start warming up the table. So you go up to the 3D print menu, and you come down to maintenance. And then once you're in the maintenance window, there's a whole bunch of things you can do here, but the first thing you should do when you walk up to a 3D printer is make sure that, that the bed is preheating. So hit the table heat button, and we'll see the platform temperature will start to rise as the heater comes on. And while we're in this menu, we're going to warm up the extruder and make sure everything's copacetic there. So we just hit extrude, and now both the nozzle and the platform are heating, and we'll see the temperature rise. So why is it important to have the table at temperature? For ABS, if the table is not at temperature, it's basically going to print something that you can... If you imagine a knitted sweater where you grab, you grab a, a loose thread and you pull it and the whole thing unravels, you're going to get that on the base layers with ABS. It okay. doesn't stick. Um, PLA doesn't require a heated bed, but having a heated bed does not hurt. For these, for these printers, what temperature does the bed need to be at? Um, to start printing, the bed should be above 85 minimum. It, it, That's Celsius, right? Science, yes. Um, the, it, it, will, it will hover between 103 and 105 degrees um, when it's fully heated, but as long as it's up to about 85, you can begin your print. Um, although, realistically, this is going to jump from 85 to 99 in a matter of maybe 30 seconds. Okay. The nozzle, of course, heats up much faster, but it also has to get hotter. The nozzle, in this case, is going to go up to uh, about 240 degrees science. And then we'll hear some beeps, and we'll start getting a little rope of test filament. Um, the purpose of doing an extrude at the beginning of your print is to make sure that A, the extruder is going to operate, it's not plugged, and that it comes up to the correct temperature. Focus camera, focus. Here we go.
how long will it typically take to heat up? Um, the nozzle, the nozzle will heat up in about two minutes or so. We're almost there right now. The, the the bed, depending upon the ambient temperature, if there's any if there's air movement over it, um, on average the bed takes about maybe five minutes or so. Um, those of you watching in the blog will be able to time it for us. So we've just got the beeps, and now our extruder is running. So we're just looking for a consistent filament, both color color and diameter. Looks pretty uniform. We're also checking to make sure that our take-up reel is operating as intended. So all of our wheels are turning here and that's going to jump in a second or two. This was uh, this was your brainchild here. Yes. And it works far beyond what I expected. So now that that beep is done, give it a second or two to just start cooling down, grab the filament, pull it right out. We have some members who are coming your way. So now, that's, now that it's done with the extrude, the nozzle temperature is going to start dropping and that's fine because the nozzle heats up so quickly, um, we don't have to do any kind of preheat on that. The bed's already up to 50 degrees, so we're going to leave it preheating and we're going to, do, we're going to check our settings for the actual print on this. Um, I'm going to lay this back down and hit, always hit place to make sure that, because even though we laid it down, it might be sticking through the bottom or it, it shifted it back onto center. And for this one, because it's got a perfectly flat back, this one doesn't necessarily need a raft. So we're going to try printing it without a raft. So we're going to go to the 3D print menu and we're going to, going to go to print preview because we, we may have to go through this a few times to, to find an acceptable time. So we have no raft checked. And for this, we can put our Z resolution down to the standard 0.3. We'll set the maximum fill rate. And we don't have any unsupported, anything unsupported there. So this, this doesn't make a difference in this situation, but what it does change is how much, how much of an angle you can have in your model before it says, hey, I need support. So if I set it to 80 degrees, the red represents the support. So it's going to put support under everything. If you change it down to 10 degrees, you only have very basic support. So if you're trying to print something hollow or spherical, um, you may want to change the angle down to 10 degrees so that you don't have as much support to peel off when it's done. But for now, we'll leave it at the default. And quality for this, since it's there's there's no texture or anything on the surface, uh, so we can leave the quality at normal. So we'll hit OK, and it'll slice it up into its it did uh, 66 layers. It says it's going to take about 10 minutes to print. It's going to weigh just under three grams, so that's perfectly acceptable. Down here we're getting so the platform is at 61 degrees. The nozzle's cooling back down. And so now if we go back to the 3D print menu again and we go to print, just double check and make sure it didn't change anything. So normal quality, no raft. I'm going to tick that just so it stays warm if we have to print it again. So it's slicing it up and now it's actually transmitting the data to the printer. The printer won't start printing until the bed comes up to temperature, but as soon as that happens, it'll start rocking. How do you know what size to do, the 0.3 versus the other ones? Um, in the the 0.3 versus, the, that setting controls how thin each layer is. So if you want to do something extremely detailed, you would set it to a much finer, um, a f much finer Z height. The trade-off with that is it does take longer to print because it has to, if you, if you set it to 0.2, um, versus 0.02 versus 0.04, it's going to take twice as long to print because it has to move over the same area twice to get the, to get the same stack up thickness. Okay. Essentially the difference you're looking at here is that this is only going to take 10 minutes whereas Einstein here took almost 8 hours to print. Oh, okay. Because, because if the, you look here, the details are, the details are small <laughs> and if, if this camera would focus you can kind of see how thin the layering is at the bottom. That's how tight the, the fill is in the And does the bed have to be in a certain spot before you print? Essentially, when you when you turn the printer on, 
Um, it automatically does the initialize and it's, it's parked in the home position right now, so I don't anticipate any problems. We'll know almost immediately when it, when it starts printing if, if it's uh, confused as to where it is. But. So we're coming, coming close to 70 degrees on the bed. It's already heating the nozzle up. So the nozzle's, the nozzle's getting the temperature. Bed's at 70. There's, there's no need for support. It's literally just all base. So whenever there's support, that's all over it. Right. Um, so for something like this, which only has a very tiny area on the bottom, and it blooms out from there, mm -hmm. the raft just keeps it from potentially getting knocked off the platform. Okay. Thank you. Looks like the printer's being fairly nice. Although I do see that it appears to have rendered a raft underneath it. <laughs> Even though we had no raft checked, that might just be a glitch in the software. How do you know it's the raft that the, the, the lines? The, the extra cross hatching yeah. around it. Because um, when you do a print, oh, that may be left over from when I did the print preview. Well, no, because I did that with a no, no raft as well. Because when you're trying to get the maximum size of something, and if it requires a raft, you need to be able to see where the raft is going to extend, and it, sometimes the raft exceeds the build platform size. All right. So that's the basics of how to set up your file. All right, guys. Welcome to Beefcake Blog. Time is 1442 on December 27th. I am going to play with my drone today, and you guys can get a good giggle out of that. I'm sure you saw it in the vlog that I, uh, I put it into the, uh, the uh, um, cage yesterday. It was a good time. So all the people who actually know what you're doing can make fun of me as I attempt to fly a fly. Stay in things. Also, yeah, whatever, you can see most of it. Oh. 
So people out there in Los I have a question for you. I want to know what your first role was that you were on that or when you find it was. And then you tell me what you want to know.
wasn't intentional. I was not aiming for the second run down the stage. I was really aiming for the top run, and uh, man, that didn't happen. I'm gonna go show you guys what I've done. In case you didn't see it yesterday, the Icarus coils made it into high voltage. I put my quad up there. I'm gonna try to go get it back now. Oh, damn battery dropped out of it again. Oh, okay. Let's see if I can uh, set the camera on the bumper table here. Shouldn't be too bad. Maybe see if I can get the framing right. And oh yeah, that's better. See. See how much better these things are. I'm really surprised I've gotten a good like five minutes of lifetime and no place to radio Oh. Uh -oh. Got an angry rock here. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what this one that back right rock was. It's just Success. All right, you guys, we're back. <laughs> 